or transmissions may be made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are even acknowledged and acknowledged. We will both call the members present, Mr. Fenstermaker, Ms. Ferreira, here, Mr. Machado, here, Ms. O'Brien, here, Ms. Solomon, here, the chairs are present. Also with us this evening are Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Jeffrey Schoonover, our Director of Business and Finance, Mr. Ronald Taro, our Director of Curriculum, Ms. Elizabeth Haskell, and our Director of Special Education, Ms. Megan Ashton. Uh, could you all please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, and the one nation, under God, The next regularly scheduled meeting of this committee is on Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, here in the Somerset Berkeley Regional High School Library. And please note that that meeting will include the, the, the FY25 preliminary budget presentation. The first item on the agenda this evening under student teaching and learning is the consideration of approval of the new student activity account for the basketball capstone project. Uh, I'm Mason Madeira, so I'm a senior here. I take a capstone class. If anyone doesn't know, it's basically a year-long project. So I'm trying to answer like, a topic question, which is how do sports affect uh, kids throughout their life? Um, so after I research paper about it, I uh, create a portfolio on it, and other things, but I also have to create a product, something tangible with it. So I decided to make a uh, basketball camp here at the school. So I went to Mr. Francis. I picked out a few days over winter break that would work. I had two days. Um, I went to Mr. Taro. I should ask about student activity fund to get that set up because I was going to I charge kids $50 for a two day camp and then all the proceeds are going to go back to the Somerset Berkeley basketball team. Um, while doing the camp, I set up a Google form, a Google site, all so they could sign up for the camp. Um, I had about, I think, 70 sign up and then around 65 show up. Um, so a pretty good turnout. I raised, I think, a little over $3,000. Yeah, uh, we had 13, I think, player, 13 or 14 player volunteers from yeah. the boys and girls varsity teams. Um, Coach Slater and I were there um, to help out. And um, then we also had uh, Mason's dad helped us out. But I mean, the kids did all the good work. Um, he was the brains behind the operation. I was just a supervising adult. It was, it was incredible. Uh, we had lots of uh, members from like the local Somerset Berkeley community, Swansea. Um, and very rarely do you have a camp during basketball season. These always seem to be like summer basketball camps or out of season. So with all the kids playing rec at this time or travel, it was like, it kind of filled a nice void um, to have it over Christmas break. I'm sure many parents were happy to have six hours of supervised care and instruction, really good instruction. The kids were great. Um, so big shout out to Mason and the boys and the girls from the Washington. It was phenomenal. Um, and then with those funds, originally I was going to use them to get some sort of like warm-up shirt or a media day earlier in the season, but since it's so late in the season, I was thinking we would definitely some team bonding activity, you know, get the whole team out and build some team morale, and then possibly getting some beer for us. That's fine. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. Um, I didn't know what was happening, but then it was all over social media um, by parents who kids the children that attended. Plus, I think the way the uh, basketball page put it out, uh, it was so well received. It was blowing um, reviews from it. So yeah, I think it was fantastic. Great job. Thanks. Um, I have just a couple of questions. So um, for you, given the success of your receiver, yeah. do you see 
has it been constructed in such a way that you see it continuing next year under the leadership of anybody else? Yeah, I actually, one of my friends, uh, Brady, who's a junior, said he wants to take Capstone next year, and he asked me if, you know, he, would, he said he would be interested in doing something similar, and I said, yeah, it's going to be fun to help him out. We actually have a young lady in my Algebra 2 class that wants to do it for field hockey as well. So they're kind of, it's kind of sparked something. The kids see you like kind of get a couple of adult supervisors and then pass it on. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I thought it would be relevant. So we do have, I, we do have some kids, like we only had one senior, Mason, on our team. So we have some kids I think that would be interested next year, our seniors, to kind of keep, possibly keep this going. Okay, so that actually is a good lead into my second question. Um, but I, I'm sorry if this was laid out, but I, I missed it. In, in setting up the student activity account, is it going to be specific for this? Because we've already received the funds for it. And so this is setting up an account for which these funds can be deposited and then used for um, some of the things that that you just talked about, right? Really. So in, in the past, I thought that student activity accounts had to be tied to kind of a student-led activity, which this is, but there has to be kind of oversight on it, a vote or whatever. In this case, would it be sufficient to have the, the basketball team kind of vote and, and present to you where those, those funds would go? I'm just wondering about the flow of the you know, my my opinion would be that it would have to flow through it. If Mr. Lawrence is going to be the advisor to that, it'd have to flow to them. Yes. And that body that's overseeing that activity would vote and agree to where the funds are going to be directed uh, and who's going to benefit from those funds. So it would be the same structure as any other student activity fund. We, like our, our main goal is to like impact positively the boys and girls basketball programs. Like, we're all for, like, supporting all sports, but, I mean, like, it's kind of like one of those things where, like, the athletics budget gets so much, like, money dispersed or whatever. We kind of want, Mason wanted something that was, like, for the basketball programs only, and since we did have also um, some of the captains from the girls' basketball team, we thought it would be appropriate that the boys and girls' boxing teams who were involved in this would both kind of share the benefit, and then, in my opinion, if any funds were carried over, it would kind of be like, I would continue on as the mentor, and then like we would possibly come again to maybe have like the next student get added to the account or Mason graduates or something like that. I don't know if that's a possibility, but to just kind of like keep it within the program. Yeah. Um, whether it be a male or female athlete, it doesn't make a difference really, but just a student who is like a senior could kind of take over and I can continue with the mentor. Yeah, and I think that that would follow suit with some of the other clubs who have kind of a turnover of student leadership, but you have the consistency of a mentor. But if we start thinking about, which I guess we just have to look at, if a field hockey uh, camp gets started, that would, we would just follow the same procedure, and there would be a separate account um, set up for that, I would imagine. Is that right? I, I would anticipate that would have to be. You don't want to commingle funds because right. you, I mean, technically you could within that activity, but I, I would recommend keeping it separate. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And, and if, Madam, if you don't mind if I just piggyback, same questions that I was about to ask. The only great thing that I heard about, A, it was a successful event for parents, uh, for the kids, for yourselves, the team. You know, it's just great to see our seniors at as a leadership role and, and also giving back. It's really nice to see that. Uh, and that's one of my favorite summer programs when I see the seniors come back or the juniors actually do some programs with the kids as well. But the thing that I'm very happy about is what you're doing with the funds. Because my concern was that we were going to build this and we we're going to supplement the basketball or whatever the sports. I want to still keep that away. So I'm glad that you're using that either for team building, uh, gear, you know. So that's one of the great things that I, and, and that would be something that I would always recommend you as a leader, make sure that the funding is for the students and not, you know, hey, we need new basketballs or no, we need is, new, or is, anything like that. Keep it for yeah, the students because it's, them. it's, yeah. I'm just there to basically help make it happen because obviously if they do some sort of like a, you know, field trip or whatever it is, like I'll be the one that helps do the purchase order, do the adult decisions and supervision for them. No, a successful year. Hey, you know, a gathering like 
you know, Six Flags, whatever the case may be. I'm just thinking, as long as it's something, because yes. I, I would hate to use those funds they won't be for right. using. In sports, it's more of for the athletes that want the varsity athletes. Next one. So one, I mean, so I don't know, I'm Addie and Peyton's mom, yeah. so it's been a long time. I just told your mom you look so grown up. Um, so congrats, that's really awesome that you did. Um, I really liked your idea about um, the team building. I just wanted to throw out there that I think we, we hear so often a lot of the students, you know, are navigating all the, the social challenges of high school, um, all the ages. And I think we think sometimes that sporting, you know, being on a sports team, you're not a part, you, you know, you don't, you avoid those problems. But I, I hear that so often that it's not true. That there are so many, even within teams, um, everyone's still navigating personalities and relationships. So I love the idea of team, team building and, you know, in fun and enriching activities that make you guys as teammates also get to know each other as people and work together. So I think that's a really cool idea. Um, of course, you know, the workout uh, outfits, uniforms, all that is wonderful too, but I think engaging in some activities together is, is a great idea. So Mr. Medeiros and Mr. Lawrence, thank you both for the presentation. There are no other questions at this time. I would entertain a motion to approve the creation of a new student activity account for the Mason Medeiros Basketball Capstone Project Fund. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Machado and second by Ms. O'Brien. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Thank you. Excellent Thank you. work. Thank you very much. Every time. Ms. Andrews, if I can just say, uh, we want to wish the team best of luck. Mm -hmm. They're taking their 18 and 2 record and number 4 Division 2 seed into the tournament. First home game is Friday right. night at 6 30. Uh, Win it to be determined tomorrow, right? Yes, either Bernco or now for the South. Okay. So one of those two teams. Home game, too. Home What's that? Yeah, home game, too. Home game. Friday, this Friday, 6 30, home o'clock. game. Yes. Yep. 6 o'clock. 6.30. 6 6.30, yeah. 6 30, 6 30, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Friday, 6.30. All right. Good luck. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everyone. The next item on the agenda is to consider approval of the DECA trip to Boston. March 7th through 9th, 2024, for the state competition. So, hello. <laughs> nice to meet some of you. I was here last year for the ICDC trip. I think I shared this with some of you, but I'll leave a couple of copies in case you want to see it. Um, plus, I'm Gianna, <laughs> if you don't know me. Uh, so this year we had about 86 students go to the district competition, which was in early January. And we had a little over 30 students place, which was really good, a little bit more than last year as well. Um, and almost all of the students are able to attend uh, the competition next week. Um, but the competition is really a great opportunity for students to not just compete in their categories and learn a little bit more about different dis uh, business avenues that they may want to pursue for a professional career or collegiate career, um, but it's also an opportunity for them to network um, in the other professionals in the community. So we have 30 students going, uh, four of them are on the quiz bowl team, so they may not have placed, but they really put in a lot of hard work and effort into the DECA club and helping out with either fundraisers <coughs> or just really putting in effort for just learning and getting to know uh, their peers and other business activities. So they're on there as well. The trip runs from Thursday, which is March 7th, through the Saturday, which is the 9th. On um, the Thursday night, all of the competitions at Boston, everything's connected. Um, so they never have to leave the building or go outside in Boston, outside of supervision, which is really nice. Um, makes it really easy for them and ourselves to make sure everybody's safe and having a good time. Um, the Thursday night is pretty much just getting everybody situated in the hotel, kind of general orientation for the competition. Um, Friday's the fun day for them, so they have a little bit of time to explore that kind of connected area, um, participate in business workshops, meet with other schools and professionals in the field, as well as they get to do the competition. 
Um, and then there's always a fun activity at night where they have to dance, um, where they can mingle with other students in the business club as well. And then Saturday is the award session when we come home. So we're just seeking approval um, for that. The breakdown for the price is there. Um, the range for the cost just goes by how many students are per room. So we tried to make sure it was the most cost effective as possible. Um, so almost all of the rooms are four students per room. Um, there was one group that elected to do three per room, but it wasn't an issue for them. They wanted to do that for themselves. And we also do plan on doing more fundraisers, so that way we can get fees down in the future for them. But it didn't seem to be too big of an issue.
which requires that the committee annually uh, designate a person to serve as its legislative representative. I would call Mr. Fence to make a volunteer, if I recall. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Fence, you make, are you interested in um, serving as our designee? district ever has um, exceeds 1% of its overall enrollment, um, then a school committee can vote to uh, cap it at 1%. It doesn't affect any of the kids who are currently in the program, but if you want to cap it at 1%, it would not allow other students seeking enrollment into either one of those uh, virtual schools uh, until we were to fall back below that 1% threshold. So. Right now, just our numbers, we are, Somerset Berkeley is one of about 25 districts in the state. We had uh, an enrollment of 960 students and 11 total students who were participating, who, who are enrolled in one of those two schools, which puts us at 1.15%. Uh, so you do have the choice to cap it. Um, my, my own opinion, while I, I realize that every time we have a student who leaves Somerset at Berkeley and goes to one of these schools, then that there's tuition money that follows the student. Uh, but for the most part, students who are enrolled in these fully online programs are doing so, um, I don't want to say it's exclusively this way, but often for social emotional needs. Uh, and I've had conversations with some of the parents over the years, and there's, it's usually, it's, it's a, it's a good program for students to be enrolled in. So personally, I am a little um, weary about putting a cap on it, knowing that it does meet the needs of some students who we can't meet here. Uh, but obviously, it's the school committee's decision to, uh, to either vote the cap or not. I, I don't have any questions. I'm just going to piggyback off of Mr. Schoonover's uh, comments. You know, if we had capped this, three students or two students would have not been able to uh, elect to choose. So we would have had to. I, I think the number is so small, me and 1%, 2%. I think if it was a greater thing, like if, you know, 7% of our population was doing it, that might draw a little bit more attention. But I think <coughs> meeting the students' needs is still my number one priority, and I would vote against capping it. And just um, to clarify for my own purposes, this is an annual vote, right? 
So this would apply for FY25 yes. for fall enrollment? Yes. Um, and then do I understand that the state itself has a 2% cap? Yes. Okay. Of total enrollment in the state. Right. And, but right now the total enrollment in the state is less than a half a percent. I'm going to move the motion just so we can vote it down. And on second. Okay, so motion uh, moved by Mr. Machado and seconded by uh, Ramos Gagliardi. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of restricting enrollment to the 1% cap? All those opposed? Aye. Uh, is one of the biggest unknowns that we have right now. Uh, one of the big items that we do know is the transportation contract is set and that's is a significant increase of I think over 17%. Uh, we are waiting for our medical insurance as well, what our medical insurance rates are going to be. Um, what I've seen so far in the marketplace and some of the documents I've read and information I've received it's ranging anywhere from 6 to 10 percent. So it seems like trends are, are, are up. I think that probably is holding true for, for Somerset and Somerset Berkeley. So that's something that we have to be concerned about. A 10 percent increase it could be as much as $200,000 on a medical insurance. That's, a, I believe, a $2 million price tag within our operating budget. So that's, that's a pretty large ticket item along with transportation. Those two items are just under 400000 <clears throat> For the most part, we try to hold the budget line steady, but there are things that are out of our control. Governor's proposed budget shows a slight increase for Chapter 70 money. We get the minimum of, of $30 a student, so it's not a lot of money that the district is going to be receiving in addition to our increased costs, so this is not going to help us that much at all. Uh, not that we're not grateful for receiving additional money, but we're not going to be receiving any new money. That's going to really help offset the operating costs. Uh, our, our, our school choice revenue is down by about 68000 based on the enrollment numbers that we have. And that, that's based on the governor's proposed budget. So we know that's a loss in revenue of 68000 there. So any, any money we receive on Chapter 7 is going to be offset by money lost from, 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 the, from the school choice revenue. The other revenue that we usually use as credits is the regional transportation bonus. That's up a little bit by 26000 So, you know, the net of the school choice and the regional transportation is about a $40,000 loss, not a, a $68,000 loss. 
Um, I have my medical, I, I have my property liability insurance rates are in. That's up slightly about close to seven to eight percent. Uh, work is comp comp insurance is up slightly and it will be up because we have to project some type of the salary increases because it's driven by salary based on classification of employees. So that will be up. The categories that we try to control would be the classroom supplies category. We're going to pre-purchase items, and I think I may have shared this with at least the budget subcommittee or maybe the full committee. You know, we're trying to make every effort to purchase items we can purchase now, get them in, check them in, and make sure they're not included in the budget. We purchased a tractor for this year that should be coming in probably April, Aprilish time frame. Uh, we purchased a new floor scrubber for this building to make sure that they have the right equipment, vacuum cleaners, and such that we make sure that the custodial staff has what they need to keep the buildings clean. In addition, from an academic or instructional standpoint, uh, we've also asked the content coordinators to make various purchases that they request in the budget to get them in now, and they're already doing that. They're following up with that. So I think there's some, there's some paperback books that ELA was looking for. I think we want to address those in the, the various areas within, within the content the, the content, uh, content coordinator's budget request. And, um, Basically, what we're doing is plugging along. It's a lot of increasing with not even having some of the major components included into the budget right now. So, you know, as, as we get more information, the budget will be adjusted. I think we have everything we need. Again, medical insurance is one of my biggest concerns. If it's is it six percent, is it eight percent, ten percent, twelve percent? We kind of need to know. This defense maker and I. Uh, We'll be following up tomorrow with that conversation on the town side to see if they have any new information for us so we can plug that number in. Um, it's a little bit challenging to, to, to develop a budget, have a budget hearing, and make sure the budget is comprehensive, as complete as possible. So I'm concerned we may be going into this budget process and approval process with some unknowns. I did, we did discuss tonight, though, we did discuss staff requests. I, I should mention that. There were some staff requests that are in there. I listed them. Um, for the other school committee members, that document I shared in the budget file document so everybody can see that if you, you want to look at that. We did not include everything that was requested because we think there should be some reallocation of personnel. We're having that conversation. Uh, Mr. Schoonover also directed me to see what the budget looks like with a level service budget, a 2% increase. I think there was one other piece, there was three, three factors in the aspect, and I apologize if I can't remember what they are, so. It was really just with the requests, uh, just to see what the, what the budget would be. So that versus <coughs> level service versus uh, two and a half percent. The only thing I would add is that uh, the next meeting for the budget is so meeting would be March 12th at 4.30 here in the library. So, but at least one more prior to the March more if we need to. But we're sort of in a holding, not in a holding pattern, but waiting for information that we don't yet have. Um, and that information is obviously going to be really important. So hopefully we'll have at least meeting. Thank you, Mr. Tarrant. Thank you. Um, okay, the next item on the agenda under new business is the superintendent's update. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of items to share. Uh, and I I can't recall if this happened right after our previous meeting or not, but I just wanted to give the high school recognition for uh, its recognition uh, to the AP Honor Roll. Uh, so Mr. Berkeley was named a 2023 recipient of the AP School Honor Roll, the Silver Medal Distinction. Uh, this was awarded for having 53% of the class of 2023 taking at least one AP exam. Uh, 41% of the seniors scoring a three or higher on at least one AP exam, and 21% of seniors who took five or more uh, exams. 
Um, and then related to that, uh, just today I will shared with me uh, a link from uh, a local radio station that had ranked uh, the 23 uh, highest AP uh, performing schools in the South Coast from Seekonk to Moffitt's Vineyard and so Mr. Berkeley was identified as the number two highest achieving school. So that was something through 2007 I can share those with you. Uh, but I guess that came out today and I, I instantly got a few text messages from people who were sharing it with me. Uh, so congratulations to Somerset Berkeley for that as well. Uh, Freetown Lakeville was uh, the, the top school, so we've got our, um, our goal for next year. Uh, we have uh, Tuesday, because it's the state primary election day, there is no school for students, since this is a, uh, a polling location from morning in, until the evening. Uh, so instead, we do have professional development, a full day for teachers. And as Ms. Haskell has shared the uh, PD plan uh, previously, uh, where we will be focusing on the same pathways. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that you want to specifically add. Um, I don't think so. I, we're uh, we're actually uh, actually. But I may add something after the PD day because we are um, bringing in um, somebody to work with our SEL pathway. Um, who uh, actually works with um, Athena K-12 Education. Uh, that is the entity that's also working with our mentor program. And um, he, uh, Dr. Brosford and I met with him to talk a little bit about um, SEL and um, uh, working with students and, and kind of building some empathy. And um, so it seems like it's going to be a really um, great session and uh, we have uh, set up a time for him to come and work with us this month which is a full day um, and uh, then again in April which is an early release day and so we're um, really looking forward to kind of that um, responsive piece again it, it was um, some of the model that we talked about was our responsive classroom that, that we have worked so hard with over the past few years um, and really um, making those connections with the academic piece and social, social emotional learning. Sometimes it's um, more difficult at the secondary level to feel like we can fit it all in. Um, and so we're really looking forward to that. We're kind of, Dr. Brussford and I were kind of jazzed about it after meeting with him. So, um, so I think that, that we'll be, um, we may be able to share some of that after the next session or two. So. And the others will be as great also. They, they've been wonderful. This is just a little bit of a new twist um, because we've been really working with Project Wayfinder um, up to this point with that um, SEL pathway. So it's, it's aligned, but a, a different group, so. We have the four pathways as a reminder, technology, SEL, uh, rethinking freshman learners. I think that's, do I have that one correct? And then the math and science focused on um, the thinking, building thinking classrooms. I think those were four pathways of right? Yes. Uh, we had, uh, let's see, this was shared with me. Uh, Mr. Gleason, his Spanish four classrooms have been visiting uh, the elementary schools and at least Berkeley Middle, I'm not sure, if, I don't think they've been to Somerset Middle School yet, uh, that, to teach lessons, uh, Spanish lessons to our, our students. Um, and whatever school they have, maybe they've only gone to Berkeley so far and they're planning to focus on Somerset in the month of March. Uh, so February was Berkeley uh, and, and Somerset will be March. Uh, also uh, related to our World Language Department, they just successfully uh, you know, came back from a, a great trip to Spain and Portugal. I think they had 26 <coughs> students if I remember right. 26. 26. 31. Oh, it was 31? Uh, 31 students who uh, who went. I heard they had had a wonderful time. Uh, great weather. It was just a, a really good experience by all. Uh, and Dr. Brelsford wanted me to share with you too that uh, this high school has completed the scheduling um, scheduling students from eighth grade, as well as students uh, currently attending Somerset Berkeley. And now guidance counselors are meeting with the students here and we'll be meeting with our middle school students uh, in the near future to just 
go over those numbers and make sure that everyone is uh, appropriately scheduled where they belong. A uh, couple of quick student activity items. We already mentioned the basketball team this week. Our girls basketball team just tipped off uh, about 15 minutes ago. Our uh, ice hockey team, uh, they are hosting a game tomorrow night at Driscoll. Uh, and I, I hear that uh, Saturday, this place is going to be quite packed as we are hosting a large show choir event for the first time, I think, in a number of years. That uh, the New England Show Choir Classic, I think that's what it's called. Uh, so, good luck to our athletes as they are in, in the playoffs and to our uh, show choir groups for, uh, for their performance this weekend for hosting, which I am sure will be a successful event. Is that show choir competition open to the public? It is. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any other questions? Okay. The next item on the agenda is to consider endorsement of the speaker music of the 2024 Music Time Parade. <laughs> it's close, my name is Brian Ryan, is that the same? Um, all right, so good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Johnson. I'm, the, I'm a board member and treasurer of the Somerset Friends of Music. Here tonight to present to the school committee for your endorsement, Somerset Friends of Music's plan for the 50, 51st Music Town Festival. Uh, we'll be kicking off the festivities with the Music Town Ball, as we always do. Um, as in years past, we plan to have the orchestra, show choir, and marching band perform during the evening. And the Music Town Court will also be announced during the event. And again this year, there will be four students chosen from the selection process. We'll also have the Music Town Pops Night, a concert that we plan to feature extracurricular music department activities, such as the jazz band, string quartet, and show choirs. We'll then have the Music Town Grand Day with parade and field shows. Uh, we have it tentative, tentatively set for the weekend of October 19th or the 20th, uh, we plan to have the parade start around the same time as we did last year, around noon, and then the field shows will start later on in the evening. Uh, We're planning to work with the Nesba Competitive Circuit to host the field shows as well. Um, at this stage of planning, with the 51st Music Town Festival, many of the dates and times are not yet finalized. We're still working with Jeremy and the Music Department to solidify them in the upcoming months. Uh, thank you very much. In that case, I would entertain a motion that the Somerset Berkeley Regional School Committee endorse the 2024 Music Town Parade. Motion by Ms. O'Brien, second by Mr. Fenstermaker. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, Ms. Burr, abstain. So good. I'll just say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate the support, as always. Yes. Can't go all out like we did the 50th. You don't want my butt. Yeah. This will be a great, a great day. So I've requested this information, I have not yet received it.
you to consider the acceptance of a donation of $130 from Full Envision Farm in Berkeley to the Greater Cafe. Um, I would entertain a motion that the committee accept the donation of $130 from Full Envision Farm to Greater Cafe. So, a motion by Ms. Ramos Gagliardi and second by Mr. Fenster may be ready have discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? So forward. Thank you, everyone. The next item on the agenda are updates uh, from Somerset Berkeley Public Schools. Mr. Machado, would you like to go first? Sure. Um, at our last meeting, um, the school committee voted in favor to submit a statement of interest to the MSBA for the uh, windows at uh, North and South. It's the new 100, is it $100 million? Yes. Uh, fund that um, both House and uh, Senate put aside for repairs for windows, roofs, HVAC. Um, the Is that Chase? Uh, no, North and South. Yeah. And then, uh, this, and actually the selectmen will be voting on it, I believe, tomorrow uh, night. Um, we also approved the amended uh, agreement for reads. We did have a staffing update um, at the last meeting. The um, committee voted to allocate, I want to say $7,500 for a grant writer um, to be uh, worked either with, through the staff or whatever means the administration felt that it would work best. So we didn't set it to any particular person, more of like a per diem type rate. Um, also, we had an update with uh, classroom safety. And the committee also had a long discussion regarding Chromebook fees or maintenance fees. We decided to waive one year, which uh, is this upcoming year, which kind of we didn't think it through because now the administration has to refund uh, all our current sixth and seventh graders that may have paid all three years. So uh, there might be, uh, you know, just for the public's knowledge, they may be receiving a refund of $25. Uh, well, why um, it was brought up by a couple of members to they felt that it was a burden on families of $25 um, $25 for all three years or what? it's Perfect. 25 each it's currently just like the high school it's 25 each year uh, so they instead of eliminating it completely we decided to try it out one year because uh, I mentioned I'm concerned about our stock we may have plenty of stock now but we may not we might need some of that money and uh, but they felt we as a committee we voted five zero felt strong enough to at least try it for one year and see how it works and if it's a burden then we'll uh, we won't waive it again for the following year so that was the real, real reason um, we did our budget um, discussions continue uh, last meetings topics was curriculum technology and I also believe we had an enrollment update um, and if I recall we also had uh, first readings uh, similar to what we voted on today and we received donations about 900 and some odd dollars from Feinstein and other organizations so I think we had no student report and that was it I think thoughts on what the new building we have for that 
time. So it's things like that that we've worked through different groups. We had a community forum um, maybe in January, and we have another one coming up in March where the community gets to. It's like a, it's a virtual meeting where the community gets to ask questions. Yeah. Um, so we're looking to put this on the ballot. Your first forum, how many attendees? Um, the community forum, so for the whole community, what about? Well, that's, it was similar to us with the middle school. Yeah, I think it's going to take, um, there's definitely talk and people talk all over the place, but not many people actually uh, show up until we've got like real numbers and we don't have those real numbers yet to provide our. Um, we'll have like these have been online virtual, but we'll have in person where they'll you know, have a night at the school where they can um, come in and talk to a live person and get their questions answered. Then numbers tend to bring people out. Okay. Well, so, what? Just so, and I, you might be doing this right now, I found one of the things that was very helpful for us is we recorded everything. Yes. So this way, if people, well, <laughs> go on to this date, and yeah, you know, I, it, yeah, and many will, emails went out that way for me. Please see meeting, you know, yeah, that type of thing. Yeah, so. like we have a, a page just for um, that, and the, the superintendent will send out updates to community. It's hard to reach those that are beyond, like, that, like your school, Senior, so the the in person we're going to reach like the senior um, groups and, and other residents. Uh, okay. Low attendance so far. Yeah, and and my obviously, you know, speaking more to your Berkeley residents since we represent both here. Um, when the MSBA and the building committee recommends a new building or a certain project, it's because it's going to save money in the long run. Yes. So uh, speaking to someone who has dealt with a middle school, I mean, uh, dealt with a uh, high school and we're all currently paying for it and now we're gonna be paying or started paying for the middle school, it, it may seem uh, overburning the taxpayers, but it's just a fraction of what it would possibly cost. So that's... So I'm just, I know you understand that, but I figured since they're going to be watching this, I'm a guy who's outside looking in, so. a Zoom link because I will once again be traveling. Then, uh, we'll consider a motion to enter into executive session. 
pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees asks me paraprofessional custodian and cafeteria unions and the Somerset Teachers Association, STA, and the committee will not return to open session. So moved. Second. So I have a motion by Mr. Machado, seconded by Ms. Barrera. We'll do a roll call of all members. Mr. Machado. Aye. Ms. Allman. Aye. Mr. Ramos Gagliardi. Aye. Mr. Festemaker. Ms. Barrera. Aye. Ms. O'Brien. Aye. And the chair of the time. And I'll repeat, we will not return to open session. Good luck with that.